Popular Class D Boards Overview, Part 3 Ice Power Ice Power is leading Class D amplifier boards development, with a broad lineup and great products. Hypex evolved from a consumer and DIY electronics company. Ice Power started as a professional company, with roots and investors from the well-known brand, Band and Olufsen. I have got a question, why I do not design my solutions on excellent Hypex and Perfi boards? The simple answer is, that the final product is meant to be sold. You can make products, that are the greatest and the best of the best, but when the price is not right, you cannot sell them in target volumes. In many cases, we often start our design with the predefined framework, known target price, dimensions, weight, components provider, and many other small things. Your design should fit in this frame. Ice Power lineup is giving more flexibility for designs. More products, more choices, and only some of them fit in the DIY market. The rest of them are for professional applications. Let's go back to Ice Power. I was so impressed by the products they designing, that took time to look back to history. In the early days, Carton Nielsen did an in-depth study of this technology, and combined it in his PhD dissertation. Audio power amplifiers techniques based on efficient power conversion. Bang and Olufsen recognized potential, and started invest in this direction. They found a partner in chip development, and large customer Samsung, working in mobile telecommunications. Finally, spin-off buyout, and competitors union to focus efforts. And we are there, Ice Power brand. I started Class D project development a long time ago, when Hi-Fi people said, that this technology is for woofers, and sound never be at the level of audiophile requirements. My researches, early designs, and experiments discovered, that there is potential, and it is a future technology. Today, I have proof, that Class D outperforms and takes over Class AB designs. Class D wins everywhere, footprint, power, efficiency, costs, and today they are taking over the audiophile market with quality. I did tons of blind tests, and even build the highest grade speaker to listen to the smallest details of sound. With the right architecture, Class D amplifiers meeting point, that there is no reason for further improvements. We need to switch our attention to speaker design, and active speaker architectures. This is the next step towards a perfect sound system. And look at Ice Power history, from niche players to part of famous names in the music industry. Let's start with the first successful products. Two boards, that you can find on eBay and AliExpress. ASX2 series, some of the boards have second iteration keeping the same footprint. These are the most sold boards. Later we will find out, what is unique in those boards. 2 times 50 watt and 2 times 125 watt. Capable work on 4 ohm loads and bridged mode. Remember, this remark for later. There is one more board, with an output power of 250 watts. By design, it is meant to drive a subwoofer. Usage Scenarios 250 ASX2 can deliver 600 watts to 8 ohms, that's a lot of power in a small footprint. 3-way active. Interesting speaker configuration where 125 ASX2 is driving the woofer, 50 ASX2 is driving tweeter, and 2 4 ohms midranges in parallel. 8-channel amplifier. That would be an excellent multi-channel or multi-speaker distribution system for a reasonable price. I did not mention 250 ASX2 in stereo. There is a better solution with 125 ASX2 in bridged connection with almost the same price. Look at functions. Not everyone knows, that 250 ASX2 does not provide full bandwidth. Very well designed features. Take your time to enjoy specifications. Small footprint, high power at 4 ohms in bridged mode. For me, it is hard to imagine what is missing there. I made three-way stereo active speaker system from four 125 ASX2 boards. Two boards in bridged mode, and two boards in stereo, for mids and tweeter. Combined with analog active crossover Behringer Super X Pro CX3400 stereo. When I demonstrate system performance to the musicians community, they did not believe that such sound is possible. AS series. 
those are the latest generation's designs, targeting active systems and high-end markets, with the flexibility to attach the board to the heat sink. For the ASX series heat sink was included in the design, for AS series not. This series of boards covering everything, starting from budget Texans instruments chip amps to high-end high-power boards. You can build stereo, mono, mono blocks and three-way active speaker systems. Sometimes I am wondering, how the product team can manage such a large inventory for production, and keep volumes as well. Some of the board's functionality is overlapping, making internal competition. 300 AS1 can be used for three ways active systems, and has channel attachment flexibility. 700 series are great, when high power and reasonable budget is required. Kilowatt series 1200 AS1 and 1200 AS2 is a flagship models. You can design high power active speakers for live performance. High reliability, a lot of telemetries, balanced input, wake up from signal combined with exceptional audio quality. If you want to build one and forever amplifier, then 1200 ASX2 will be my choice. In stereo, it is capable of delivering 600 watts per channel, it has phase correction circuits and automatic operations from 80 volts to 250 volts mains. A different angle to the product line. You can build a broad range of subwoofers. A broad range of stereo systems. Powerful multi-channel systems. Active speakers mixing speaker impedance. 4 ohm subsystems. And crazy power combinations for live performance. Board specs summary. Check by yourself. Regarding power ratings, look only at 1% figures. 10% distortion power numbers are marketing figures, and we will ignore them. This series of amplifiers have an input voltage range from 85 volts to 264 volts, and you can operate in any country in the world. 1200 ASX1 and 2 is standing out of the crowd with exceptional specifications. All boards distortions, even in the worst scenario, are far below 0.1% what is the audibility threshold. The same for 300 AS1. 1200 AS1 and two fantastic specs. Maybe it is worth building one prototype and take a test. So far I did not find an application scenario for such a power. And the board is kind of expensive. ASP series. This is a professional series ice power lineup with the exclusive specification and an integrated heat sink. Low profile design easily fits in 1U enclosures. It is easy to integrate those boards into active speaker systems. Those units targeting the live sound and mobile sound market. Boards are 2 ohms capable. Despite good specifications, they did not gain audiophile and DIY attention. 250 watt solution. There is an ASP main board with a power supply and extension bus to connect A series boards. A series of boards are smaller in dimensions and without a power supply, giving extra flexibility to build two or three way active speaker systems. 500 watts version. Pay attention to the dimensions. There is no significant dimension difference between 250 watts and 500 watts boards. Kilowatt version. You can build a really powerful active speaker for live sounds. Combined with high-efficiency speakers you can get impressive sound pressure. Reliable system with tons of protection. Typical application scenarios. Once we are not using them for DIY market, I will not go through the details. Specifications. Balanced input. Meeting professional requirements. 2 ohms ready, low noise, high current capabilities. Harmonic distortions, good. Extension modules sharing the majority of ASP board's functionality and specifications. So, we covered most of the ICE Power integrated audio amplifier board's lineup. In this story, we did not touch the Brick Series. Brick Series boards are meant for designers to be integrated into compact solutions. There is my pick from the total lineup, 125 ASX2, 200 as 2 and 1200 as 2. 125 ASX2 is by far a universal board, where you can build a 125 watt stereo amplifier, 500 watts outstanding quality monoblock, excellent three-way active speaker system using two boards. Unique feature, 
you can separate woofer amplifier power supply from mids and tweeter amplifiers. It is important, because the amplifier output signal has a direct relation to power supply bus fluctuation. The woofer is power hungry and takes a lot of current. Separating them we have perfectly clean mid and tweeter reproduction. 125 ASX2 has unique design flexibility and the best quality, price and performance ratio. When I talked to the IcePower team, they confirmed that this module is selling in volumes, outperforming another lineup. It is no surprise that it is the only board that has a second release or version 2. Current genuine IcePower 125 ASX2 is different from eBay available boards, what are version 1. I have a video where compared both boards. In this picture you can see the current version of 125 ASX2. 200 is two excellent board for budget designs with balanced input, good specifications, and good power supply with broad mains voltage operation. You can use them in 110 volts and 220 volts countries. Just plug and play. I will make a kit, or even finished units with this board. Target market, gamers and music lovers with desktop speakers. And finally, the winner of perfection, 1200 is 2. In the stereo version it is capable delivery 600 watt stereo to 4 ohms, both channels driven. It fits in the top line audiophile amplifier category. It is hard to imagine a scenario, when you are short with a power of 600 watts at a listening distance of 3 to 5 meters. Even you have large speakers and large premises. 1 kilowatt and more at home are exceptional cases. True, this is my favorite board, and let us take a closer look at specifications and functions. Manufacturer Description You can stop a video and read it through. Functions Read it by yourself. I will draw your attention to line universal mains with active power factor correction. This is only an ice power model with PFC circuits. 1200 ASX2 has an exceptionally good power supply. But it comes with costs, and board price is not cheap. Another interesting feature is waking up from a signal, useful for remotes on off, it is built in. Incredible specifications for 1 kilowatt amp. Very low noise of 30 microvolts, 3 ohms capable can drive challenging crossovers. It is large in size and length, you should consider a 2U enclosure. A lot of controls and telemetry. Audio specifications, pay attention to continuous power dispatch and thermal considerations. Mechanical dimensions and hole map. Important for chassis design. Frequency response, excellent. Total harmonics distortions THD, is very good even at high frequencies, what typically is a challenge for high power class D designs. Channel separation. Output impedance. Damping factor 700. Output versus mains. Dissipated power. Important for designers. Cooling may be a challenge in a closed environment. I would make it active. This board is too good to be cooked. Board has a very good balanced preamplifier. It is true by the book, and part of very good design. Unbalanced connection example to keep high common mode rejection ratio or CMRR figures. Wake up on signal connection diagram. Board wiring diagram. For minimum noise floor twist speaker connection cable. The majority of speaker output cables are not twisted. You can take two wires, an electric drill, and twist them for any length needed. Things to avoid. Important manufacturer note. Ready by yourself. Safety and electromagnetic certificates. Important, when selling in the EU. Can you purchase it in the open market? Sometimes yes. It would be an interesting DIY project with extra complexity. This is how the standard package looks like. This is the minimum purchase quantity package. There are some designs how the 1200 ASX2 design looks like. Example from a Palan audio lineup. Not a good example of engineering design. Boards are cooking inside the chassis. Far better design. Vertical placement with airflow. 
a couple of DIY projects. People struggling to find appropriate chassis. You can see that a large heatsink is not used. There are several DIY designs, and all of them struggling with cooling airflow. When you heat the chassis, inside temperature will be 50 to 70 degrees Celsius. Some of the semiconductor temperatures will rise to 100 degree. Electrolytic capacitors lifetime reduce. Great high power boards need cooling. Either you create chimney type airflow using 3U high units with proper vents, or make active cooling solutions. 1 kilowatt is a lot of power and summers at some places are hot. So, that's it. It was a short overview of Ice Power Class D boards. Impressive. Ice Power leading the market. Some of the designs are truly amazing. I do not know how many iterations of prototypes were developed prior final release, to achieve such perfection. Interesting, that the latest generation boards have been produced in Malaysia, not in China. My guess, to protect intellectual property. There are not many companies in the world specializing in class D OEM boards. It is difficult business where you should be ahead of the market all the time. Quality of audio amplifiers meeting point, that there is no reason for further improvement. You can measure better device, but a human cannot hear. I think, that the next fight will be about dimensions and power per square centimeters. In the next episode, we will look to company Purify. Newcomer in the market. The company has been established by brilliant and experienced engineers. They focus on technology beyond today's standards. A new type of loudspeakers with exceptional linearity. Amplifier boards with THD below 0.00017%, what is not achievable by Class AB technology even in theory. Enjoy!